Okay, welcome back to a tailor's approach to cloth sewing in Blender. This is the fifth and the final part of the series and it's gonna be awesome. And now we're talking about finishing and shading. Okay, we now have a nice looking shirt already uh, that we have made from the previous part. Um, however, some areas like, let me turn on the uh, wireframe first so that you can see it. So that uh, some areas like the breast, uh, the hem, uh, the breast, uh, the hem, and the color, something here, uh, also somewhere inside here. Uh, uh, look like they need a little bit of smoothing so let's do it first uh, okay we're gonna smooth it in a new shape this is our final shape if uh, if you forget about it this is our final shape with the open color this one is the one that is closed and this one is open color and now we're gonna make another a new uh, shape key just call it smoothing and turn it up to one value so now we are ready to do some smoothing so let's go to sculpting and now let's see let's turn on the wireframe and we're gonna smooth the smooth is way too high is 0.7 let's drop it to 1.1 1, uh, 1. and now we can start uh, smoothing <laughs> okay uh, anyway hang on let's I'm checking my OBS in case checking in okay that looking good that's looking good and okay so we uh, we're gonna do the smoothing in a new uh, shape key so we don't screw the original uh, shape key okay now let's let's smooth it out okay uh, we're gonna start with the breast area and we just want to apply a very small smooth thing because we don't want to destroy or like flat it out you know too much that we lo we lose uh, these nice folds okay just want a very light retouching and yeah that looks good and let's go to the ham it looks a little bit yeah we can just lightly smooth it and we still have this passing through and uh, we're gonna fix that later but now we're gonna do the color first and let's hide our body mesh and let's see our color we got a little bit of a situation here and let's smooth it out maybe bring it up a little bit okay okay that's good this one as well just a little bit we don't want to lose all the details so okay that's looking good let's smooth it outside and okay let's move it around and okay that's too much of smoothing okay Okay, just pull it out. 
now that's that looks better and I think we're gonna do this one too because it's way too crumply crumpled and just a little bit and this one looks kind of chaotic really like Hmm. What are we gonna do with it? Can we just pull it? Okay, we can. Let's pull it back. Okay. Nice and smooth. Okay. Okay, now let's do the other side. Okay, that's too much. Okay. This one too. This one just a little bit. And yeah, I think that's it. Maybe this one, the shoulder, a little bit. And the other shoulder. Okay. Let's see it with a subdivision so we can see it better. And yeah, that looks great actually. No need to have a too heavy on the smoothing, just use a very light amount of smoothing and they look great yeah so next what we're gonna do we're gonna deal with the with this tiny overlap around the second and also this around the last uh, button so okay let's turn off the subdivision and Let's go to the uh, sculpting and okay. Let's first let's see what we do with the with this and yeah. So we're going we're gonna go back to the basic so that we so that we can uh, mask the area because uh, what we're gonna do is basically pull uh, this this uh, the left side back a little bit so we're just gonna have to uh, mask the right side of the cloth first and we're gonna we're gonna mask it with this tool uh, box mask and if you click it, we can also have the options. Uh, we also have the options for laser mask. And yeah, we're just gonna use it to mask this area, the right one. Okay, and good. Let's see, it's masked and we can just go back to here. And wait sorry and we can just pull these this side back go back to it with our G and first we let's pull it back and let's see what we do uh, I think let's do it in edit mode first uh, yeah but but if I use edit mode, I cannot really see it. So let's see what what can I do with uh, sculpting. Uh, hmm. Can I do it with sculpting? I don't think so. Yeah. So 
yeah lighting just let's go to the edit mode and just first we're gonna pull this manually uh, turn off our uh, magnet snapping tool and yeah it's it's great just have to pull it back a little this one too and this too just make sure that we end up having a uh, nice squares and now we can go back to our smoothing and yep let's smooth this out okay that's bad maybe did pull this one back a little and let's reshape the color uh, this uh, open color shape and yeah that looks uh, correct okay now we just have to deal with the one at the bottom and yep let's go back to our uh, edit mode and bring this one back manually maybe just this one and something like that and yeah that that seems to fix it now go back to smoothing and we can smooth these things out and yeah that looks correct mm. let's reshape it first so that we get roughly a square a nice square and yeah now we can just uh unmask with uh let me see with alt m oh sorry maybe this is a good time for me to restart my shortcut so that you can see what i'm doing and yeah we're gonna continue with uh smoothing here just a little bit and okay let's see what we've done okay not too bad and yeah that's for our smoothing let's see what if we need some smoothing around the cuff but i don't think so because it's nice already it has nice uh folds around the cuff natural looking fold and we don't really have to smooth them so i'm just gonna leave it that way and yeah i guess i guess that's it for the smoothing uh then we're gonna do uv unwrapping and mapping first it's important for us to do it now and not later and it's quite a different uh, approach to normal uv mapping process where we do it after we get a finalized object and the reason for that is because we're gonna collapse these hang on a minute uh, i'm gonna show you that because later we're gonna collapse these edges here this the the stitches uh later so we've got something like this uh, okay something like this let's turn off the subdivision uh, okay though now it's clean that uh, okay okay i've made this earlier <laughs> and if you notice it's clean now uh, we've got no more stitches dangling around just like this if you see we still have these uh, stitches around meanwhile in this finalized product the finalized uh, shirt we no longer have that 
uh, and it's clean. However, if you turn off all of the shape keys, this one, uh, and then we see the basis shape, uh, you'll see that it's kind of, you know, destroyed. Okay. Uh, meanwhile, if you see from our original, if we go back to basis, it still look good. Meanwhile, if it's already finalized, it's no longer looking good in its basis shape. So, yeah, and if we try to, you know, UV unwrap in this kind of uh, shape. Okay, let's turn on our UV editing. And it's already got a nice UV uh, map. So, if we try to uh, UV unwrap this now, this is what we got, we're going to get. Wrap. Okay, that's processing for now. And we've got this, uh, well, it's actually looking like a, uh, a piece of shirt that is, you know, like cut open. But, uh, well, it's no longer nice and squares, you know. It's kind of, you know, it's kind of destroyed and you'll get this bad and messy topology. So, uh, so yeah, so before we do this, uh, we want uh, this nice UV unwrapping before we final, uh, finalize the stitches. So yeah, I'm gonna hide this back and let's turn on our shirt body original and yeah i guess that's what we're gonna do uh we're gonna uv unwrap so yeah let's see what we've got let's turn on our uv editing mode and well yeah we, we just have to unwrap it and move them around basically okay i'm just putting my wacom aside and okay okay now let's let's do uv mapping okay i'm just okay i've 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 got my basis shape and now what i'm gonna do is go to the face mode select all and now you can just you and unwrap and now you've got this nice uh, and square and and squares nice and square UV map and yeah I just uh, I guess we just have to move them around to the correct uh, to the correct place and actually there's no correct way of placement so you're actually free to move them around uh, as you like, at least for now. Uh, however, this is how I like to place them. First, uh, we'll walk, uh, we're going to work on the body mesh first, in this one. And for this one, it seems like it is the, the back uh, face and what I'm going to do is uh, I'm going to press shift S and select it to cursor with offset. And I'm just going to rotate it so that it points upwards, just like the mesh. Sorry, that's flipped. Now, like that. And now we're going to move them to the side just a little bit. And we're just going to move this to this is the the left front piece and just gonna move this to rotate it 180 degrees and move it to the right so that they are next to each other 
okay make sure that we we leave a little bit of gap because so that we know that they are two different pieces together and yeah now we just have to move this to the left and give them a little bit of a gap something like that now uh, you can move them uh, easily using N and in here you you see the coordinates for both the shapes if you see if you just click if you just select this one it shows minus 0.26 but now with this selected it shows the middle uh, point of all uh, faces selected so what I'm gonna do is just put number point five in its x axis x location I mean and we're just gonna move them up so that they're not outside the island this is the UV island uh, and we're just gonna move it up so they're not you know outside and yeah that's that look that's looking good however they're not centered so we're just gonna move them so that they are nice and center okay something like that and now we can do with the arms yeah okay uh the arms this is the right one this is the left one okay Mm. Okay, let's see. The arms should point the opposite side, and it doesn't really matter which is left or right because it depends from the perspective you see it from. Uh, because now uh, this one is the right one, this one is the left one, but if you see it from behind this is the right one and this is the left one so it doesn't really matter at least for the arms uh, but for me seeing the arm meshes from the front side is a good idea so that's what i'm gonna do so i'm gonna rotate this uh, 180 degrees to the side so that it points to the towards left and this one points uh, to the right and yeah I'm just gonna snap it to the cursor to the cursor and yeah let's drag it to the side and yep something like that and now we can move them to its correct place yeah and now let's do the cuff where's the cuff well it's it's kind of buried okay that's nah okay now you can just snap oh sorry I selected the one of the faces and let's reselect them again and make sure that there's there are no other faces selected and we just snap it to the 2d cursor so now where is which one is the right okay that's that's the right one and we're gonna rotate this 180 degrees and i'd like to move the cuff here so that it's kind of the same way uh, the way that we make the mesh the arm mesh so I'm gonna put this right uh, next to the arm mesh UV map and yeah you can you can reuse the the Y information for this and okay that's look that looks good actually let's make it 8 uh, 75 and yeah now we can just move with this and okay you can copy the 
the Y location and what you can do okay of course that you can uh, manually do this but uh, there's actually a better way to do it the more accurate way uh, we know that uh, this one is located at point eight seventy five, and the UV island just goes from zero to one. So we know that to make this uh, the same way uh, like this, but it's just the opposite uh, direction. We just have to have one minus point uh, eight seventy five and oh sorry I clicked on the face and let's do it again point eight seventy five and now it's completely exactly the same and identical you can you can see it by uh, selecting both of them and they show you 0.5 as its middle point and that's what we want okay next we're gonna move the uh, oops sorry I'm gonna move the colors okay now we just have to put it 0.5 and move it up and rotate it something like that okay the base uh, is correct but the this one the wings uh, is kind of flipped okay something like that and I'm gonna put it right at the top and yeah let's let's check it let's check our UV map okay this is the back and okay the back looks good and the front part is also looking good and the cuff and Ah, oh, this one, uh, there's this double face, if you notice, and this is actually our, let's, okay, this is actually uh, our flaps, this one, if you still remember it, that we created these flaps, and what we're gonna do is we just easily uh, pull it up, something like that. Let's put it, okay, that's too close. Uh, okay, now that's too, 75, 77, probably, 76. Okay, that's close enough. Mm, and we're gonna do the same with the, this one, with the other flaps. And we're gonna move them up to point six and yeah that's it for our UV unwrapping and yeah let's see I'm checking in uh, if there is some other things uh, there's a slit in here if you notice uh, and that's okay they're not completely uh, sewn together like that. And that's okay. Uh, it's also actually a good thing because we know that these two faces uh, don't connect. Uh, so that's a good thing. Uh, okay. I guess I guess that's it for the UV unwrapping. Okay, now that we've done a nice UV map, we can actually continue with merging those 
vertices of our stitches. Now let's go back to our layout and okay, let's check it. Okay, now if we go back to our basis shape key, you will see, you will see that uh, our stitches, these stitches, these edges, that is our stitches, uh, they actually connect to vertices, this and that, okay? Uh, and we're gonna merge them so that these two vertices uh, become one. Um, yeah, so here's actually another trick um, that I'm gonna do to save a lot of our time. Uh, because normally, just like what I said, the technique that we're going to use is, at least uh, for me previously, that we normal th normally think to merge these vertices one by one using merge and center, something like that. Uh, it's doable, but it's going to be a waste of time time so here's what i'm gonna do first uh let's go back to our basis and then we're gonna hide the color and then the cuff anyway you can you don't have to select them uh we remember that we have made our pin to include our color and our uh, cuff, you can just use it and click. Hey, hang on, wait a minute. It includes our stitches. Okay, that's better. Okay, anyway, maybe I have to repeat it. Uh, I see that it included. It includes uh, the these two stitches and that's not what we want we just want the faces so we just have to click the we just have to use the edge mode and go back again to the face mode and now it's gone and now you can safely hide them and yeah okay check it in uh, okay so now the color and the cuff mesh has been have been hidden uh, we can just select all these edges here using uh, x-ray mode and yeah you can just select all these uh, stitches this is the arm that's another arm and we're gonna select all these oh we can just use our cuff drag mode to bring out the this to bring out the uh, cuff out and we don't actually have to select these two because well we want the stitches still be there because that actually the button stitches and we don't want to delete it because once we delete it uh, the cuff is no longer a button so we don't want to delete these two uh, okay let's continue with the the other side and yeah that looks clean okay let's check if i miss anything and yeah now we can just continue with our darts stitches okay and 
yeah that this is a bo this is still a boring part for me but it's kind of necessary to do it so yeah just keep doing it okay that's just a little bit more okay Make sure that you select the right edges and yeah now let's see it from the top ultra graphic and we're gonna select all these because these if you see that these tiny edges they belong to the color stitches and we're gonna select all of them and yeah however uh, we're gonna unselect um, the open color pin by deselecting them. Okay, where is it? Where is our okay? Anyway, if you want to see uh, whether it's been unselected or not, you can just go to our shirt color clothes closed shape and you can deselect and you see that these two uh, vertices and edges uh, are now deselected and the reason for this is actually we're gonna use these uh, open color pin uh, later so yeah mm, let's check in in case I missed anything okay that looks that looks all and yeah we can um, after that let's uh, turn on our final uh, shape key in, in this case this one shirt color open and and still inside the edit mode, we can press M and collapse, boom. And after that, uh, let's unhide the faces, the color and the uh, cuff faces. And yeah, you'll see that now all the edges has been stitched properly now if you try to move th these edges it's just gonna be one edge and that's what we want uh, okay okay now that's that's actually all for the finishing part and I'm just gonna turn on this and also the smoothing and Yes, that's the finishing part uh, and it's done. So we can now continue with the shading part. Okay, now let's do this. Okay, now you see, just like what I did with the, you know, this one, the <laughs> shade, this finished body mesh that uh, I kind of cheated behind the scene that I've created this uh, also behind the scene I actually have created this uh, shaded fabric uh, collection and inside it we've got two mesh and it's on the floor one is fabric and the other is fabric print we're gonna hide this for now we're gonna talk about it later but for now, we're going to talk about the fabric mesh. And yeah, in, in here, in fabric mesh, I've got a shirt shader in it. And if you see, if you go to our shading uh, tab, you will see now that we've got our checkered pattern. And this is our template. Uh, this is our template. This is my template. And we're gonna remake all this. And yeah, that's 
that's what we're going to do. So, okay. So here's the thing, okay. Uh, procedural texture is not my forte. So I have learned all these from the god of procedural text himself, Arendelle Woodford. You can check his uh, channel, Arendelle, and you may find plenty about procedural texture in it. So, okay. So, okay, so here's what I'm gonna do, okay? I'm, I will remake uh, all this so that you can go along. I will also explain all the nodes we need, uh, what they do, and how we're gonna arrange and connect them. However, my explanation will only suffice uh, those people who, just like myself, only understand a very basic level of procedural texture. So if you're more advanced or you have more curiosity towards uh, procedural texture, Arendelle has explained it very, very well and logical, and it's much better than what I can do. So yeah, if you want to learn more detail about this, Please check out his channel, Arendelle, and videos, which I will put in the description box. Okay, now, before we do anything, we should activate the Node Wrangler add-on first, because uh, it makes everything easier than when we are working with nodes. Uh, it's actually come uh, freely with Blender. Okay, let's, I'm gonna add another window capture. Okay, okay, there it is. Uh, that's my uh, preference, Blender preference, add-ons, and you can see, you can just type in Node Wrangler and activate this one. And I have, so you have just have to activate this add-on to follow along this uh, part yeah so I'm just gonna close it and okay checking my OBS nothing is wrong with it okay now we can continue uh, now okay let's take a look at these nodes it may seem like a complicated set of nodes uh, but actually it's divided into two main functions uh, this middle one okay um, okay that's okay maybe not this one uh, all these these middle ones are basically to make these threads so if we use uh, control shift and left click our maximum node you will see that these are uh, the threads or the fabric weave node. Uh, yeah, maybe it's a good idea if we scale it down to something seenable, something like, yeah, 10. So yeah, so these uh, middle nodes uh, are basically to make these pattern these uh, threads, fabric weaves, uh, and that's the middle one. Uh, meanwhile, uh, okay, these top ones are actually the color patterns. Okay, this one too. These are the color patterns. Uh, you can check it. Uh, same way with Control Shift D, and you would see that. Okay, that's smaller. That's way too small, so you cannot see it. Now, you can see that these are the color patterns. Okay. Now, just to make it clearer, you can 
move it a little bit okay leave a little bit of gap so that we can see them clearer now uh, let's start with the fabric weaves fabric weave nodes first uh, if you notice the fabric nodes are two divided into two almost uh, identical set of nodes if you see uh, you know modulo modulo greater than they follow along identical set of nodes and if you see that here you will see a checkered pattern and if you see it here you also see exactly the same checkered pattern um, however if you look close uh, if maybe I have to turn this down again and if you look closely they're not actually identical checkered patterns because they actually have uh, directions if you check the top one here uh, you will see that on the white boxes you have this uh, top sides uh, and bottom sides and they have a sharp cut to it meanwhile uh, its left and right side have a rather you know fading or gradient to it um, the direction of the gradient is actually the directions of the thread and this one runs because the gradient are uh, the gradient is located on the left and right uh, this one actually runs horizontally okay now you can see it better if we check the multiply now that now that it looks uh, a little bit clearer that the threads uh, are running from left to right and that means it runs uh, horizontally okay so but if you check the mul this multiply you will see the opposite that the threads are running from top to bottom and that is uh, vertically okay and okay how they also if you notice that this one runs horizontally so but the color if you remember to okay i have to turn this up again and the color too uh, is actually running uh, horizontally as well as this one they run vertically so yeah so the top set this one okay this one is the the horizon the horizontal set while the bottom set is the vertical set okay including uh, its color pattern so yeah you have uh, two sets the color uh, and the threads and and you also have two other cat sets and that is the the horizontal set and the vertical set uh, they may run a different direction but the mathematical logic behind behind them are very identical so that's why the top and the bottom nodes look identical so now that I've explained the anatomy of the notes, which I think is is very poor. <laughs> so let's make a new set of notes uh, from scratch, and yeah, let's let's do it. So okay, first I think I'm just gonna I'm just gonna pull it up. So 
Okay, and let's make a new one. First, you need a UV map node. Okay, uh, a factor math. Okay, anyway, you can turn on the snapping tool so that your apa, your nodes uh, can snap nicely and yeah this one you can use the snapping tool okay uv map add uh, factor math uh, okay now set it to scale okay scale yep and connect the uv uh, output to the factor input okay next uh, let's get a separate XYZ put it next to it and get a math node okay anyway uh, factor math and math node are different uh, you can you can tell them apart by the the color on their tags the factor maths have this purple meanwhile the the math node have a blue one okay and yeah let's continue uh, the math node uh, set it to sign okay now let's connect the scale factor to the separate XYZ factor and XYZ we can connect the the X output to the sign input okay if you check it with same shift control left you will get this a gradient one gradient however if i turn it up the factor scale to something like this 10 or maybe 20 you s you'll see that the gradient uh now you see this uh similar looking gradient uh pattern from left to right just like what we had with this one where is it no this one however uh, there's a bit of problem because uh, though we have set the scale to 20 but we don't really have 20 stripes there right we've got like three and a half white stripes and three black stripes so in total uh, it's something like 6.5 stripes but we want 20 so to fix it uh, you can duplicate the math node the sign and put it behind the sign so something like that it's kind of magical they kind of snap so basically you just have to duplicate and put it behind it or if you cannot do it uh, you can just do manually something like this okay that's basically the same operation it's just uh, blender makes them faster so okay okay now let's change its operation to multiply and set its value to pi you can actually just uh, type pi to it and they will show you the pi number to it and now if you calculate the stripes we get a nice and correct 20 
1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Yeah, then that's a correct 20. If we go for 10, it shows a 10 scale. And if we show just 2, it gets 2. And yeah, okay, that's a uh, saddle. Next, we've got our stripes, but we haven't got the checkered pattern that we want, right? We want something like this. So, to do that, duplicate a, a math node and change its operation to modulo, modulo, yeah, modulo, and set its value, its second value to 2. Okay, next we're gonna connect the the Y output to the modulo, modulo's first input. Okay, now you can duplicate uh, this one again and change its operation to uh, greater than and set its threshold to 1. Now you can connect the output, the value output of the modulo to its uh, value input. Okay. Now we can just simply move this to the right. Okay. Now duplicate this multiply and put it behind them. So now it snaps and change its operation to add and we can just move it again to the sides and now this is kind of magic uh, connect the output of the greater than node to the add node okay and voila we got a nice checkered pattern out of it now we just have to move them up so that it's nice and tidy. Hang on. Why is it... Okay, that's better. Okay. Okay. And now we've got a set of a checkered pattern. Now we just have to duplicate this five uh, notes and pull it down a little bit so yeah remember that we connected the X to the add node and then the Y to the modulo in the previous set in the top set okay that's fucks up and yeah the X to the add and then the Y to the modulo. So we got we're gonna do the opposite for the bottom set. Uh, so we're gonna connect the X to the modulo and then the Y to the add. Now if you check the the bottom sign you would see now they are different they have a different direction and that's what we want now now we've got one horizontal this one is horizontal because they go from left to right and we've got the vertical because they go from top to bottom however we've got another problem in that the positions of these two results are exactly uh, the same. What I mean by that, uh, 
the whites in the horizontal set is exactly in the same location with the white boxes uh, in the vertical set. And that's not what we want. What we want is for the uh, white boxes in the vertical set to fill uh, the black boxes in the horizon horizontal set and vice versa. To fix that, we just have to duplicate a this one uh, to multiply and you just have to connect the value output to the value input and set the multiply to minus one and now if you check it again we've got a corresponding uh, a completing uh, checkered patterns yeah now we've got this next what we're gonna do oh yes okay we're gonna combine the horizontal and the vertical set and here's what I'm gonna do duplicate the math node change its operation to maximum sorry uh, and you just have to connect these uh, sign the horizontals sign node to its first input and then the output of the multiply not the sign uh, to its second input and yeah let's see now this looks very close to our final fabric weave node uh, however we still get a problem in the gaps between the sets because now that they are too tight uh, if you see from our final piece that they have you know a bit of gaps between the horizontal and the vertical set so that's what we're gonna do next we're gonna make a gap make, make yeah gaps okay uh, to do that we just have we're gonna pull this to the side and just cut it and yeah you can du duplicate a math node uh, change its operation to absolute absolute where is it okay this mm, this may seem odd but we will actually uh, connect the absolute the horizontals absolute node with the output of the sign of the verticals sign node i know that's that's weird but you're gonna see what what this do okay now next we're gonna make a mix a new mix rgb and we're gonna connect the value to color one input okay and we're gonna change the blending mode to color burn and then we're gonna change the color to into black and yeah we can, we can do the same for the vertical set we're gonna uh, connect the horizontals sign node to the value and let's see what this does okay now if you see that from our color burn you will notice that if you try to play around with the factor slider you notice that it controls the size of the black uh, stripe and we just got which is gonna be the gaps that we want to build so okay 
So now we just have to combine uh, this gaps node with the uh, sine node that we already have. So to do that, okay, I'm just gonna pull this back a little, and we're gonna connect the. We're gonna duplicate first. I'm gonna duplicate a math node and change its operation to multiply. Okay, and we're gonna connect the output of the sign to the first input of the multiply and get the output of the mix RGB to the second input. Now, you see the order doesn't really matter because uh, it's a multiply operation and it's kind of interchangeable so it doesn't really matter you can just put it uh, in any order you want and do the same with the vertical set but instead of going from sign we're gonna go from multiply and then from the color bird okay now let's see what this does Okay, that's what we did. And if we're gonna connect, if we connect this to the maximum node again, and this is what we come up with. Okay, that looks uh, closer to what we want. However, so we've got now, uh, we've now got our gaps, but now, it's everywhere, including around these edges. We want the gaps to be just around the intersection. And so, okay, let's draw an annotation. And where is it? Okay, annotations. So we've got the, uh, the gaps all over the place. Uh, however, that we what we want is actually for the gaps to be just around the intersection of these uh, four lines. Okay, we just want this to be, you know, we want the gaps to just be here and not uh, anywhere else. So, yeah, that's what we're gonna do. Okay, just hide our annotation and yeah, let's do it. So next we're gonna duplicate a math node and we're gonna change its operation to add. Okay, now we're gonna, okay, first I think we're gonna connect the output of the sign node to its input okay the output of the sign yeah okay now I'm a little bit confused okay oh yeah I think it's uh, what we're gonna do I think we're gonna let's see our reference yeah I think we're gonna have to move this to the side okay now what we're gonna do is that uh, we're gonna reroute this from here okay let's cut it and we're gonna reroute it to our multiply and so basically what I did is because previously it's something like this so now we are rerouting the sign from this to multiply and then now we're gonna connect this sign to the add and then from the add to the multiply and we replace the connection 
between the sign and multiply and yeah and set the value to 1.5 if, if it hasn't so yeah we can just pull it up and we can do the same with the uh, vertical set same thing we're just going to we're not gonna use the sign but we're gonna use the multiply and then from the multiply to add and then from add to multiply again and yeah that's that's looking good now Okay, now if you see that we don't have the correct uh, placement of the gaps, we just have the gaps around these four threads intersection. And yeah, next we're gonna add a controller node because though, yeah, we can manually adjust all these numbers, you know, like. Uh, the scale we can manually adjust that or the mix RGB too yeah we can do that uh, but however it's just a tedious job so let's make those controllers anyway uh, there's a little bit of not a little bit something that uh, the add number actually corresponds with the color burn factor so for example if i make it way way high like 0.75 you would notice that uh now it's it's kind of a we leave this uh dark this black uh shadow uh, shadows and the reason for that is because we haven't updated our ad so if we increase the ad okay sorry something 0.9 you would see now that ah sorry if we change it to here 0.9 you would see now that the gaps uh, the black areas uh, are gone so the amount of this uh, color burn corresponds well uh, with the add, even though it's in reverse. So, for example, if I change it, change our color, color burn here uh, to 0.9, we have to change this value to 0.9 as well. So, yeah. Now that, that looks kind of cool. Uh, so yeah, that's why we're gonna make a controller for them. So the first we're gonna get a value node, and we're gonna f connect its value to the scale. So now we just can control the value for from this uh, node. And okay, now let's get. A, an invert node and yeah we're gonna control we're gonna connect um, its output to the both mix RGB factor input and also to the add value input both of them and now you can see that it's a nice slider so you can have a very very tight uh, fabric like that or you can have a loose a loser more loose uh, fabric kind of fabric and yeah this controls uh, individual size of the fabric threads uh, yeah as well as the, this controls the size of the gaps so that's this is kind of handy controller okay next 
we're gonna make the color patterns. So we're gonna make this uh, thing. Uh, okay, you see for this demonstration, just like what we did uh, for this, uh, we're gonna make both the striped and checkered color pattern because they're actually be built using the same set of nodes because if you notice uh, checkered pattern is basically a horizontal stripe pattern and a vertical stripe pattern combined so let's build our color nodes first uh, let's duplicate our modulo and greater than node while maintaining their original inputs by pressing uh, shift a uh, control shift D you can see they maintain the dy input and yeah next we're gonna make a new mix RGB and connect the output of the greater than to its factor input and set the color uh, like you want you can set it to any color that you want uh, but for my case uh, I'm gonna set it to something like red uh, red and white probably yeah that looks cool actually uh, red white pattern mm. yep now that we've got our horizontal stripe pattern uh, we can s do exactly the same thing with the vertical set we're just gonna do it really quick uh, okay just duplicate this one and connect its value to factor and we've got our vertical stripes next we're just gonna we just have to apply these these color nodes uh, to the thread nodes that we've had earlier so here's the thing if you see uh, our multiply this one or this one uh, that's actually our final uh, thread our uh, our final this one is our final horizontal threads however it already has uh, this gradient you know or feathers around the corners and that's not what we want for the colors because we want the we want to apply the color nodes uh, to a flat thread pattern okay and only after that we combine the horizontal and vertical color nodes and only after that we join the combine okay maybe I'm, I'm just have to show you the thing so uh, we want to apply the color to a flat uh, thread patterns and after that we combine the the horizontal and then the vertical color nodes in here and only after that we join the combined color node with our final fabric weave node to get this okay so yeah let's let's do this okay first we just have to multi uh, to duplicate uh, the multiply node and turn it to greater than connect the output of the multiply to its value 
and change its threshold to one. Hey, sorry, sorry, zero. And we can get a new mix RGB. Okay, and connect the value output to its uh, factor input. Now set the color one to the to to black and connect the output of this uh, mix RGB node to this new RGB color 2 input and if you see now we've got our uh, stripe pattern now we just have to do the same can actually just cop, uh, duplicate it and yeah I'm gonna do it quickly and yeah so I think you're just gonna have to combine them uh, to combine these uh, this horizontal and then the vertical we can use another mix RGB, something like that, and we can change its uh, blending up, blending mode to add and crank up the factor to one, and you got well, okay, well that doesn't. We've got. A problem a bit of problem uh, because they don't really look like a checkered pattern at all now and the reason for that is because our modulo and greater than node uh, it's it's way too small right if you notice that from here you will notice that the color alternates by each thread meaning that one thread is red another one is white and then the next thread is back to red that's not how a stripe pattern works because normally the color alternates between a set of threads so say one set of threads uh, counts 20 threads then the color alternates between 20 threads the first 20 threads are white then the next 20 threads are red and then the next 20 thread are back to white so let's do this so let's fix that i mean uh first uh i think we're gonna have to crank up the scale value and set the modulo to something like 20 and because our greater than is always a half amount of the modulo, so set it to 10 and do the same thing with this. Okay. Now if you if we go back to our mix RGB, it's now a correct color, right? We've got this, we combine this, we combine with this, and we've got this. However, I don't really like to use another mix RGB here because I have this factor that that will always be set to one. So instead of using mix RGB, I'm just gonna use a factor math and use the add. Of operation operation and now we can just reconnect these two and it has the same uh, result okay uh, what we're gonna do next okay next we just have to join uh, these this flat color pattern to our final fabric weave node which is in our maximum node. We can easily do that by uh, using mix RGB. 
and yeah set it uh, we're gonna set its blending mode to multiply and we're gonna input the maximum to color one and the add output to color two and we're gonna crank up the factor to one and now we've got a nice checkered pattern okay now you may be wondering that why uh, why this one why is this one using mix RGB even though that we, we would always use uh, the factor set to one well yes I mean like I could use this as well actually uh, let's change it to multiply and maximum and they will have exactly the same result however the problem with it is because uh, this is gonna be our final base color node and we're gonna connect this one to the base color so and the base color has a yellow input and meanwhile our if we use the factor math they have a purple uh, output so meanwhile the mix rgb has a matching uh, yellow output so that's probably why i use mix rgb for this one and not factor math so yeah now we've got a nice checkered pattern you can always play around with the modulo and greater than nodes here uh, to get a different effect we know that uh, we've talked it we've talked about modulo a little bit and we know that modulo controls the width of the stripes but it's actually the greater okay let's see it from here oh this one uh, we know that the modulo controls the the amount of threads that it takes to finish one uh, set of stripes so when we when we set it to 20 it will take like 20 threads if you count it one by one we got one two three four five six seven eight nine ten one two three four five six seven eight nine ten so if we change this value to something like 50 it will take a 50 threads for one set of uh, stripe pattern we know that uh, however it's actually the greater than note that controls the ratio of the stripes so for example if we go back again to 20 and then we go back to 10 that this means what this means is that we have a 20 threads for one set of stripe and and with 10 threads to make the white and 10 threads to make the red because we set the greater than to 10 however if you change it to something like 11 you will have now only nine white uh, threads one two three four five six seven eight nine and you've got eleven uh, red threads yep so if you add nine with eleven you've got the same twenty threads that is set with the modulo it's it's kind of cool actually now so you can 
go back and play around with with each modulo and greater than note to get some variations. So for example, you want something very small like that, or you can make it the opposite. You want this one, you've got the whites uh, big and the red uh, small. You can just do the opposite and then you've got a big red and a small white and you've got something like that and you can always just just play around you can even have a different uh, number for the modulo and greater than for the horizontal and the vertical so for example you can always use like 10 and 5 for this and you get this nice uh, elongated uh, checkered pattern or you can just use something like that probably and that looks cool too but uh, for this for this example I'm just gonna stick to 20 and 10 standard because that looks kind of uh, good already okay now that we've got uh, checkered pattern uh, next we're gonna do a stripe color pattern um, as I've mentioned earlier you can reuse these exact same notes uh, to make it to make it procedurally there are two ways of doing it first you can just change the for example that uh, I want a vertical stripe meaning that it goes from top to bottom uh, you can just change uh, the horizontals mix RGB color to white and white combination and now you've got a vertical stripe pattern however the red the red stripes are not that strong because we've got these uh, white threads in red areas as well so if the first approach doesn't suit you we can actually connect we can just turn this back to the color and we can just we can actually connect the vertical mix rgb here uh, to the horizontal mix rgb here and we can just cut this one so that it remains black and now we've got a raw a very strong red stripes because there are no whites in the red areas however the downside to this is that we've got this uh, very sharp line between red and white areas and that's actually okay because well anyway i mean like if you scale it up to something like a thousand no one gonna see it anyway so yeah that's cool you can use the second approach uh, because it's kind of the best to do it uh, to make it procedurally you see so I've mentioned earlier that uh, checkered and stripe pattern are built the same but in real life checkered and stripe pattern are actually made a little bit differently checkered pattern is made with a, te a technique closer to our procedural texture because uh, the color that you see in checkered pattern let's return this to its original setting because the the colors that you see in checkered pattern is built by the colors we have in each thread that we use you can see it from the mix RGB that in horizontal set uh, the threads uh, run horizontally as well as the color run runs uh, horizontally the same too with the vertical set uh, meanwhile stripe pattern in real life is usually printed you can see it uh, clearly with our second approach 
to making the stripe pattern procedurally. Uh, now let's turn it back. Now you see that our problem arises because the stripe colors run against the direction of the threads. The threads supposed to run horizontally, uh, but the colors run vertically. Um, that's why we've got our problem. So, though we can, in theory, make a, a stripe pattern using either one of two options that I've given earlier, I've got another way of making it, uh, and it's much, much better. And that is to make a printed pattern. With this technique, you can use it not only to make a stripe pattern, but to make any printed patterns. So, if we go back to our layout, uh, if you remember, you see from my shaded fabric collection, you would, you would find another plain mesh called fabric print. In there, you're gonna see there's another set of nodes uh, down below. And, and these nodes are to make uh, our print nodes. It's quite simple actually, and it's quite shorter as well. And we're gonna remake them. Now, let's go back to our original plane mesh to do it. Okay, here. Back to shading, and let's redo it. Okay, to redo it, first what you're gonna need is a combine XYZ, a factor math, white noise, and mix RGB. Okay. Set the uh, the operation, the math operation, the operations of the factor math to to snap, and set the increment of the x and y to one, and okay, and the mix RGB change change its uh, blending mode to multiply with its factor set to 1. Okay, now we're just gonna have to connect all this. So from the output of the combine XYZ to snap factor and the output factor of the snap to the white noise factor input and then the color uh, where is it? Okay, from the white noise color one color output to the color one input of the mix RGB. So yeah, so next we just have to connect the uh, greater than from our vertical. Uh, sorry. Okay, let's do it from the horizontal first because we're gonna build both. So we're gonna connect the greater than from the horizontal set to the color two input. And you're gonna get this purple color. And that's the right color for now. And now you'll connect um, the X and Y output from the separate X, Y, Z. Um, and gonna connect it to the corresponding X to X and Y to Y input of the combined X, Y, Z. Now we've got uh, bright colors. <laughs> and you'd notice that our color is a little bit too thin, right? So 
we have to widen the the color stripe along its x axis so we're gonna set the x increment to to two and now they have the right width um, but they seem to be upset they still upset in its x axis so to fix that let's create a math node we just can sorry uh duplicate from here and set its uh operation to add okay and set and you can okay reconnect the x from the combine combine x y z to the first value and then set the second value to point five and then we're gonna reconnect the output of the add to the input to the x input of the combine x y z okay now they are now partially correct because a half of them are correct like this one this this uh row seems correct but the next row you know is now split in half and the reason for that is because the colors uh are actually correct but uh it's our threads because if you notice that our threads are actually also offset in half so to fix that change the input of the add node this one from the combine xyz to the this add okay we're gonna connect its output to the input of the new add node and we just kind of cut this off and now we've got perfectly arranged uh, colors yeah that's kind of beautiful so yeah i just have to re rearrange the whole thing and now we just have to we've done our horizontals now we just have to do uh with the verticals so just have to duplicate them and kind of reverse the inputs so first uh we're gonna reverse the the snap increments from two from two and one to one and two and okay now let's see what we've got oh we're gonna con uh we're gonna wait okay let's redo this from the x and y here so that you can see what we're doing okay wrong okay I'm just gonna redo this okay now oh first we're gonna have to connect the the greater than of vertical set to here to color two and yeah now as you just like uh the last time uh they look kind of upset so but now they're kind of upset in the y-axis so we're just gonna reverse it reconnect uh, the this thing the add to combine xyz and we're gonna change the the input from the add input from the uh, separate XYZ 
to the add of the vertical set and voila uh, okay that's a little bit different because now everything is split in half and to fix it uh, actually it's easy uh, change the operation of the add to subtract and voila it's now correct so yeah so what we have achieved is actually uh, we have created an individual index for each of these little uh, boxes and yeah with that being done uh, let's make the actual print notes uh, okay mm, I just feel that you may still not understand about this one okay first what we're gonna do is actually to create a new uh, factor math oh you, you can just uh, duplicate this one and just have to okay okay checking in okay it's correct now uh, we get a factor math and just have to change its operation uh, to divide and we're gonna need a mapping node and we're gonna need an image texture node okay okay let's connect the output of the divide to the uh, factor and from the mapping factor to image texture factor input okay mm, yeah that's that's it okay so now uh, we can safely delete our white noise texture because this is just for testing so we don't we don't really need them anymore and we can also delete uh, one of the two mix RGB and yes we just have one rgb now and we're gonna set its um, ben blending mode to mix so we want uh, a vertical stripe pattern so we're gonna connect the because as of right now we connect the horizontal greater than node to our mix rgb and because we want a vertical stripe pattern we're gonna connect the vertical set greater than to its color too we just can't cut this off okay so okay we don't connect it to color but we actually connect it to factor and because we're gonna connect these snap nodes to its color inputs okay now we just have to connect the output of our mix RGB to the first input of our div divide node and output of our value node back here to its second output okay now this one it kind of matters uh, which is which okay this one uh, the order of the placement of the inputs because it's uh, now a divide uh, function uh, operations so it's kind of matter here so what we want uh, 
The first one is from our mix RGB and then the second one from our value. We don't want it to be flipped and yeah. Now, okay, now actually, wait, uh, actually the print node is actually done. Yeah, we just now have to make or import our print image actually and yeah that's what we're gonna do so for now we want a vertical stripe pattern print so to make a print pattern we can just use our uh, you can just use this we can just use uh, bake the procedural node we had created actually so first what we want is we're gonna create a new uh, texture and let's just call it okay let's see if it okay checking my OBS okay let's call it something like red striped uh, pattern and then you can uh, leave the rest to the default and okay now we can just uh, check our mix here with same control shift and left click and then click our image texture go to render properties uh, go to cycles and of course i'm using gpu compu computing computer uh, but if you want to use cpu it's okay as well but it's just gonna be longer and yeah go down to bake panel here and from bake type select emit then yeah you can just click bake and voila you can now you know save the image uh, this one image and save okay anyway I've I've created uh, a red stripe pattern before so you just call it pattern pattern 2 okay that's okay and yeah so now if you click on the image texture again now you'll see that they've got a nice gradient pattern between the white and then the red and then we've got this mid-tone in the middle so now if you connect the output of the image texture to the this multiply our final um, you know our final node and we're just gonna replace the add there I hope that's correct and now if you see you'll see that now we've got a nice gradient pattern between the white and then the red area yeah natural looking gradient on our stripe pattern print yeah now you may think that this is kind of bad you know the gradient thing but that's actually the natural way of it because if you take a because right now we set it uh, way too low like a hundred but if you set it something higher it's literally gone but still I mean like if you zoom it in it's still a gradient and that's actually natural way of doing it because if you take a a cloth a, a printed cloth or fabric 
and then you put it into microscope, you will see this gradient because it's kind of, uh, and it's basically bleeding because it's same thing with paper actually. So when you write, uh, when you write, when you put an ink on the paper, they've got these natural bleed, bleed, uh, so that the, the, the ink kind of, uh, gradient kind of do the gradient thing around the paper so yeah the same way with the the cloth they have they should have a natural uh, gradient even though that it's uh, printed so yeah actually now let's just crank it down again to a hundred uh, you can set, okay, now that we've got our uh, red stripe pattern, uh, yes, you can actually not just use it, just like I've mentioned earlier, that you can set any image for the image texture and get the same uh, printed effect on the fabric. So for example, if I open an image okay can you see it mm, I don't think so on my OBS nah okay now if I open my blender file view and in here I actually have a floral pattern and I'm just gonna open the image and now uh, let's turn off our this one and now voila I can import it and we'd get something like this uh, anyway uh, if you bothered with this uh, it's tiny but it's kind of annoying edges around the threads and you want to fix that just change the interpolation from linear to cubic and now it's it's kind of gone uh -huh. yeah these annoying edges thread edges and now it's gone so as of right now they may seem like they seem more like a knit pair of socks but actually watch this if you turn up the scale back to high value something like a hundred a thousand you'd be seeing something like this yeah it's incredible isn't it okay now now we've got our final notes created uh, this one we just have to connect them to the principal BSDF. Uh, so we're gonna connect three sockets, and that is the base color, uh, base color, uh, alpha, and normal. Yeah. So we can cut this from the previous uh, nodes, and yeah, let's connect them. For the base color, you can input uh, either one. You can you can use this floral, or you can use our normal uh, stripe pattern. Not this one. We have to redo this, and we've got a checkered pattern. So we're gonna connect this multiply to the base color and for the alpha socket we actually one math node sure okay i think we just duplicate the greater than and put it here and connect the maximum output to its uh, value input this one so 
now we've got this uh we got the gaps thing because this is the gap but now but this one has threads in it meanwhile this one uh, has isolated the gaps only and we can connect this one to connect this, this output to the alpha here and and for the normal we're gonna make a bump bump map and we're gonna connect the the maximum to its height and then from the normal output to the normal input of the principal PSDF and yeah so we can now check out our principal BSDF and yeah if you feel that the bump map is too strong you can just yeah do it something like maybe 0.5 is good enough now that looks awesome really I mean like yeah Anyway, if you if you're wondering, okay, let's turn on the viewport shading. Now, if you're wondering the function of the alpha, uh, it is to make these gaps invisible instead of just showing black color to it. So, yeah. Next, I think let's apply the shader to our shared mesh. Okay. Just go back to our layout and turn and turn off the shaded fabric visibility. And this is our body uh, shirt mesh, shirt body mesh. And I'm just gonna add a new shader and from this drop down go for shirt shader okay now go to edit mode select all and then assign to the shirt shader and yeah now it's just going going you know like white but actually if you turn on i'm going to turn off the wireframe and if we turn on the shading and it's what we've got yeah yeah that's that that looks uh, really great uh yeah i think let's see for the for the scale i mean like i think that a thousand is you know is a sweet spot for the scale because if if you go really like low something like a hundred you've got this you know weird shapes weird way too big now the threads are showing so yeah you will want something like a thousand it's kind of a sweet spot really a thousand uh, scale value Let's turn on our model. Okay. Now, actually it's kind of cool. If you wonder about the alpha, is that, uh, remember that we put gaps in uh, our threads and that little uh, gaps actually give us this kind of see-through in the clothing <laughs> and that's kind of cool because that's uh, how our fabric works they're not a solid you know thing they have uh, gaps between them that kind of let the light to go through and yeah that's kind of cool and you can actually play around with these settings and you can make it a little bit 
uh, tighter, something like, you can make it completely, uh, you know, solid, like that, oh, you can make it really, really see-through kind of clothing, and, yeah, that's, yeah, and, I mean, like, there are lots of uh, see-through clothing, and if that's what you're aiming, uh, just turn up the the invert value so yeah but uh, for this shirt because well it's not a see-through clothing so I'm just gonna turn it back to 0.5 I think it's a good number and now that looks like a shirt with a checkered pattern really really good I mean oh that looks really good yeah so again you can always uh, play with the modulo so let's play with it see if you if we like you know some ideas about how to play it you can make a really really big stripe something like that and that looks great as well or you can make a something even different number let's let's try a different number something like this one is 20 okay that looks kind of odd but I kind of like it this one but let's change this uh, okay maybe this or 20 or something like that that looks cool as well yeah you can play around with this you can you can even turn it upside down and have this one to be the big ones and yeah 40 yep something like that and yeah play around with the the numbers uh, and let's see what what sticks so yeah that that looks really cool um okay however okay just let's go back to 20 because yeah this is the because that's the pattern that uh, we want to to make a checkered pattern and this is kind of a the default checkered pattern with uh, the same amount of uh, squares and the same amount of red and white areas so yeah now now let's see how this stripe pattern looks like and let's go back to red stripe and we are we gonna connect the color output to the second input and that's what we get uh, well the stripes are way too big because well we've changed the size and the great thing about using procedural texture to make our image texture is that it's seamless so now we can just adjust we can adjust the scale uh, in the mapping node something like let's say 10 and yeah now we achieve a smaller stripe pattern size and that looks good however you notice that the orientations for the arm and then the color are wrong and it actually has to do it has something to do with uh, our UV map arrangement so let's check our UV editing and go now okay now here's the problem now you can just uh, turn on the red stripe pattern here okay 
Now you see why uh, the arm and the collar are facing the wrong direction because you see that our arm, because our UV map, okay, because we, yeah, yeah, no, yeah, because uh, the orientations of this uh, UV map is kind of wrong, it's kind of flipped the other way around, and it's gonna turn off the subdivision. And you can just simply uh, rotate it like that, uh, it's 90 degrees, and this one too. And, yep, bring it up a little bit, and... Okay, something like 75 probably, yep, better, and okay, just rotate, now we've, we have to do something for the color too, just have to rotate it 90 degrees and bring it down, and yeah now that it now it has a correct uh, orientation now if we check it again now they face the right direction yeah so next okay because uh, our UV editing is great already now we can just pin them so that they don't move around and yeah so okay now anyway okay now let's see uh, how our floral pattern looks like okay go back to shading and Mm. Let's see, I think something's a little bit... No, I think it's good. Yeah, let's see our floral pattern. Uh, first, let's uh, reset the scale to 1. And now we've, we need a our floral pattern. And yeah, that's how it looks like. Ooh. That's really good. That's a gorgeous looking shirt. Uh, however, let's increase uh, the scale back because uh, so we've got more flowers. Uh, something like two, mm, maybe three. Uh, that's better. Hmm. However, I think, hang on a minute, if I set it to 3, I see this, you know, this uh, cut, this sharp cut, and I think we're going to see it too uh, in the back. Uh, yeah, there it is. So, I think when we're using a non-procedural texture as an image, Texture, we should keep the scale with a, an even number so that we don't have, uh, we don't get the sharp cut on the back, but also on the front here. You still see it. I mean, like if we go back to tree, you get this uh, seam, the sharp seam, and if we make it an even number it's gone and yeah I think I like it really I mean like that looks great we turn on our subdivision well it 
Yeah, that looks great. Now, okay, this is the last minor shader and that is for the buttons. Yeah, don't forget the buttons. Now, let's turn this on, all of them. And okay, I'm not gonna be fancy with it. You know, I'm just gonna use a white. A just, maybe not white. Let's see how it turns out. Let's get a new shader, call it buttons. And what I'm gonna do with it, you know, let's play around with colors. Blue, not so good. Okay, maybe just red, yellow. Okay, yellow kind of looks good. And mm, yeah, that, that looks great. Mm, okay, let's turn our viewport shading and yellow. Do yellow looks good? Mm. And I see, I think that I'm gonna crank up the roughness too, uh, crank it down, so that it becomes more like plastics. And yeah. And that looks great. So, yellow. Let's see the other options. But I also like the cyan, to be honest. But but I guess first we have to apply all this to all the buttons, so we can see it more uh, clearly. Okay. Okay, now let's see. What if cyan? Cyan, they look great. Cyan looks kind of great. And and anyway, you, you can we can play around with the colors all we want. However, I think I'm just gonna. You know what? I'm just gonna use white <laughs> for this one because, yeah, I'll make it plain and simple. Because uh, if we are to change it to back to our this to our checkered pattern, uh, you know, if we put something fancy color to it especially the if we put yellow now it looks you know bad because it may look great if we put this as the pattern or maybe but it, it doesn't really look great if we put the uh, the the checkered pattern now let's see if we can figure out the color that is good for both. But red is great for this, but it's not so great for that, right? So yeah, yeah, I guess we're just going to have to make two sets of button shaders uh, but I guess I guess that's okay I mean like let's make it white for now yeah something like yeah that looks better and yeah and that's 
That's it, yes. Mm, let's see if I miss something. Um, and anyway, okay, before we finish this one, you can actually assign two shaders for uh, one object. And you can just use, okay, maybe that's what we're gonna try. Save it first, and you can use a new shader, and just let's call it, uh, okay, we're gonna use our shirt shader, but we're gonna make a duplicate of it. So now let's say that we want the the cuff and then the color a bit different. Now probably we want the cuff and then the the color to have a flor floral pattern while the the body the rest of the body have a checkered pattern. So we can do it as well. And we can call this as cuff and color shirt cuff color shader. And now you can just enter the edit mode and then remember that our pin vertex group that's kind of handy now. You can select it and go back to our material properties and assign them to the new uh, shader and now they've got two different shader yeah how cool is that yeah now go back to object mode and now we have two different shaders for one uh, body and that looks really good yep hang on a minute but what's happened with that oh okay what happens what happens with this faces mm, I must have missed it select oh okay I haven't selected all the faces and why is that yeah the I think it's kind of yeah I guess we've got a problem yeah you can just resign I guess after we merge all that uh, together uh, the the stitches they kind of remove some of the faces from the uh, color from the pin and also the color uh, for the text group and we just have to re-add them to our color to our pin sign and then let's go to cuff the select and we're gonna re assign this to the color so now if we select the color we get the whole thing and yeah we can just reassign them to the new uh, shader and Voila! Yep, that's looking good. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. That that's a. I think that's it, guys. So, yes, I'm just gonna render the animation and stuff, uh, and show you the final result at the end of the video. 
other than that, yeah, I guess that's it for this part and series. We've done a lot, uh, and I'm really glad that we did it. So, if you made it this far, I really hope the result that you have get are worth the time you've spent watching the series. And, yeah. Anyway, I think I'm gonna make one uh, standalone video next, show, showing you how to use this uh, shirt because as of right now the shirt is still on a static 3d model so yes for example uh, yeah just give you a little bit glimpse of what we're gonna do next is that you see actually uh, our model is animated to have uh, the arms, uh, her arms uh, down. So what we're gonna do next is basically uh, return on the cloth uh, simulation, and then we're gonna run it again. Mm, okay, that's gonna be taking some time. So. In that future tutorial, uh, I'm going to show you how to use uh, the shirt on a post or a dynamic or a dynamic 3D model as well as in animation. Yeah, now, now we see the models moving and now look at that, yeah. You've got a nice uh, fold around the armpits, just like what you would expect from a normal shirt. Yeah. I mean, like, if we turn on our subdivision, you get a nice and crisp looking, beside this one. <laughs> and if we turn on our shading, viewport shading and look how great is that yeah that's what we're gonna talk about in the next standalone video and how to pose the character or 3d model so that the cloth um, the fabric or the shirt in this case can follow the body shape and yeah that's it yeah i guess uh see you next time yeah